According to Focusrite, the Claret Plus 2 Pre offers an even better audio quality than its predecessor, and they apparently also improved the one thing that I complained about in my previous Claret review, the headphone output. Let's see if that's true and how much better the Claret Plus series really is. Hey, Julian Kraus here, and here I've got a Focusrite Claret Plus 2 Pre, which I had a thorough look at, and of course I'm using to record the audio for this video. Quick note, I bought this interface with my own money and the help of my patrons, Big thanks and shout out to these absolute legends. Now, as I mentioned, I have already reviewed the Claret Plus 2 Pre USB before, and I'm going to use this opportunity to compare the performance to the Claret Plus series. But before that, let's have a look at the basics and have a look at what you get with the Claret Plus 2 Pre. On the front of the interface, you can find two XLR and TRS combo inputs to plug in microphone, line level devices and instruments. For each channel, you can also find a gain control and a button which allows you to independently control phantom power. For each channel, you also have two LEDs to indicate the status of the instrument and air mode. The inst mode switches the TRS input from a line level to an instrument input. The air mode is designed to add a slight coloration to your sound, which emulates the original Focusrite ISA preamps. More on that later. On the front of the 2 Pre, you can also find a big monitor knob, which lets you control the main outputs on the back. Further to the right, the 2 Pre got three LEDs. They indicate the power status, USB connection and clocking. You also get a knob to control the headphone volume and the corresponding quarter inch headphone connection below it. On the back of the 2 Pre, you will find a 12 volt DC input, which is used to power the interface. The Claret Plus can be directly powered by the USB-C connection, but your PC needs to have a USB-C connection which delivers 15 watts. Not all USB-C connections can do that, so check your manual if you want to be sure. Otherwise you will need to use the power brick, which luckily is included. You also get a power switch, which seems like a small thing, but I really like the option to easily and quickly turn on and off the interface. To connect the interface to a PC, the two pre features the before mentioned USB Type-C connection and a USB-C to USB-C, and a USB-C to USB-A cable is included. The 2 Pre also features an optical connection to extend the number of inputs on this interface. With 44.1 or 48k sample rate, you get 8 more, and with 88.2 and 96k sample rate, you get 4 more inputs. The 2 Pre accepts ADAT and SPDIF, making the 2 Pre essentially a 10 in and 4 out interface. With the Claret Plus 2 Pre, you also get a MIDI in and MIDI output, and of course two sets of balanced TRS line level outputs. At this point I want to quickly mention the great build quality of the interface. The all metal housing and the smooth knobs make this feel like a premium product. So on the outside everything is still the same as with the original Claret, only the design of the housing changed slightly. Now the original Claret USB series is actually not that old, so why is it that Focusrite now releases the new Plus series? Well, some time ago there was a fire at a chip supplier which produces the audio converters and this had a big impact on many audio equipment manufacturers. And if that wasn't bad enough, there is currently an ongoing chip crisis which doesn't make producing the interface any easier. But I'm drifting off. Focus, right? So it seems that Focusrite were forced to exchange some components and apparently they used this opportunity to improve the performance of the Claret series. The majority of electronics seem to be still the same as with the original Claret series, but instead of the AKM converters, the Claret Plus 2 Pre now uses two Cirrus Logic CS43198 digital to analog converters and a CS5381 analog to digital converter. These are excellent converters and now I'm really curious to see how the interface performs. Okay, I already know I write the script, but you need to wait just a tad longer, because first, let's talk about the software features of the Claret Plus 2 Pre. The 2 Pre is controlled using the fittingly named Focusrite control. Here you can toggle things like the air mode and switch between line and instrument input. To be honest, it's a bit inconsistent to have the Phantom Power control as a physical control on the interface and the other two options only available in the software. But that's the way it is. On the output side, you can build a custom mix, so you can precisely control how much of which input you want to hear either on your monitors or your headphones. By the way, the mix for the second set of line level outputs and the headphone outputs are coupled together, so they will always play the same signal, if you were wondering. One more note, this custom mix only works with a sample rate of 96kHz and below, which is not a big deal, but something to be aware of. 
As with the original claret, the mixing for the direct monitoring is done digitally, so some amount of latency is inevitable. Luckily, the latency is kept extremely low, and even with 48 kHz, it's only 0.5 milliseconds, which is imperceptible. So, all good. By the way, Focusrite, why does the original claret only work with the older Focusrite control version and not with the new one? When I want to switch between the claret and the claret plus, I always need to reinstall the driver, as the Claret only works with the 3.6.0 version and the Claret Plus only works with the 3.8.3 version. What's up with that? Is there no backwards compatibility here? Regardless, if you install the correct Focusrite control, it gives you access to some features that cannot be physically controlled on the interface and you get some basic mixing and routing functionality. Before we move on, let's check out the interface's latency. The measured round-trip latency should be as low as possible to not perceive any delay when for example using virtual instruments or an MSIM. These are the times I got with a sample rate of 48 kHz and different buffer sizes. And here are the times for 192 kHz. Normally you would expect to see a decrease in latency with higher sample rates, but interestingly that's not what we see here, and to be honest I'm not entirely sure why that's the case. This might change in the future with the software updates, but at the time of making this video, the latencies seem to be a small step back from the original Claret 2 Pre. Okay, let's dive a bit deeper into the audio quality of the Claret Plus 2 Pre. The 2 Pre has a maximum sample rate of 192 kHz, and this allows it to capture frequencies way above the human hearing range. And that's exactly what you can see in the frequency response measurement. At the maximum gain setting, the response extends all the way up to 65 kHz, before it rolls off. On the other end of the scale, things look slightly worse. Here the response is down by about 1.5 dB at 20 Hz. While I highly doubt that you will ever notice this in practice, it would have been nice to have a slightly flatter frequency response in the bass region. As with many interfaces, the response improves when you use less gain, and then it's a nice flat line across the human hearing range, and even above and below that. In terms of distortion, the mic input also performs great. The descending line indicates that the distortion is lower than the noise floor. The only anomaly we can see is that the signal starts to clip just before 0 dBFS. But if you leave yourself some headroom while recording, as you should, this will never come into play. Speaking of headroom, you want the interface to have the highest dynamic range possible, as this allows you to leave yourself more headroom while recording without introducing any additional noise. As you can see, the Claret Plus 2 Pre has an excellent dynamic range of about 118 dBA. According to Focusrite, this should be the same as for the original Claret, although the unit I tested measured slightly better. But the difference is only 1.3 dB, which could be due to production variants, and quite frankly, 118 dBA is excellent, no need to panic about this inaudible 1 dB difference. Let's check out the preamp performance of the Claret Plus 2 Pre. I'm currently speaking into a dynamic microphone, which has a very low sensitivity. This accentuates the preamp noise and is pretty much a worst case scenario. Let me be quiet for a second, so you can have a listen to the noise flow of this setup. That's very low noise and really no surprise, as the Claret Plus 2 Pre uses the same preamps as the original Claret, and this results in an exact same noise performance with minus 128.8 dBU. This is a very good performance, but not really special, and as such the Claret Plus 2 Pre is sitting right in the middle of the chart. Now, purely in terms of noise, you do not need a fat lifter with the Claret Plus 2 Pre, but I want to add that the interface has a surprisingly low maximum system gain. From all interfaces I've measured so far, the Claret Plus comes in last, and this means that even if you max out the gain, you will still have a relatively low recording level with insensitive dynamic microphones. This isn't really a problem, as you can simply boost the signal a bit in post, but if for some reason this isn't an option for you, then a cloud head can help you out here. As promised, let's shortly talk about the air mode. I now have the air mode engaged and you should have noticed a boost in treble. Here's how Focusrite describes the air mode. Premium relay controlled analog circuitry on every preamp emulates the classic Focusrite ISA 110 by switching the impedance to 2.2 kilo ohms and adding two cumulative high shelves, totaling a 4 dB boost in the high frequencies. To be honest, I couldn't have said it any better myself. The air mode changes the frequency response to look like this, and this will of course emphasize higher frequencies, giving the sound noticeably more treble. Now, the air mode also does introduce some amount of distortion, but it's not that much and I doubt that you will hear that in practice. 
As mentioned, the input impedance is also affected by the air mode, changing from about 6k with the air mode off to 2.2k with the air mode engaged. Yes, 2.2k ohms is arguably lower than 6k, but this is in my opinion not enough to make a noticeable impact on the sound. So the majority of change in sound that you hear is due to the change in frequency response. By the way, if you want to hear how it compares to other interfaces, I've made a comparison, which should pop up on screen right now. And if you're curious how you can emulate this mode, if your interface does not have the air mode, I've also made a video about that. So as I said in the previous clarity review, the air mode is an artistic control that can give your audio a boost in clarity, which might come in handy for some of you. Let's have a small look at the line level inputs of the 2 Pre. The frequency response is extremely flat, all the way from 10Hz to about 65kHz, which is nice to see. In terms of distortion, we can see a slight rise above minus 10 dBFS. This could have been a bit better for an interface in this price range. That said, if you record with your level around minus 18 to minus 12 dBFS, as you normally do, then the signal will be in the sweet spot here and distortions are inaudible. In terms of noise, the line level input performs really well with a dynamic range of 117.5 dBA. Again, we can see that my particular unit is ever so slightly worse than the original Claret 2 Pre, but that's no problem as the 117 dB dynamic range is plenty. All in all, that's a pretty good performance for the line level inputs. Of course, an interface does not only need to record, but also play back audio with a high audio quality. So let's have a look at the outputs, starting with the main outputs on the back. Here's the frequency response of the main output, which is essentially perfect, because it is a straight line across the graph. The response is very flat from 10 all the way to 40,000 Hz. The distortion performance is also excellent. The graph only levels out around minus 105 dB, and this would have likely even been a bit better if the measurement wasn't starting to get limited by my audio analyzer. You can also see that this performance is independent from frequency, as the curves pretty much all have the same shape. The output also delivers a nice strong signal of 16 dBV. One of the bigger upgrades from the original Claret is the dynamic range. Here the Claret Plus comes in at 124 decibels, which is a huge dynamic range, and this ensures that you do not hear any noise from this interface. By the way, the main output volume control is actually an encoder, so the volume is digitally controlled, and this means that you get a perfect channel balance even down to very low volumes, which is sadly not the case with the headphone output but I'll get to that in a second. Speaking of the headphone output, it has gotten a big upgrade from the previous version. I've compiled all my measurements into this table here to make a direct comparison possible. That table isn't getting any smaller, isn't it? But let's focus on the important bits. The frequency response is very flat, no surprises here. The output impedance comes in at around 5 ohms, and this ensures that even if you use low impedance headphones, the frequency response stays flat, which minimizes audible coloration. It could have even been a bit lower, but to be honest, it is totally okay for 99% of all headphones. In terms of power, the Claret Plus 2 Pre is pretty much the same as before, which is totally fine, as it can power the majority of headphones on the market with ease. Now, here's the interesting part. In the review of the original Claret 2 Pre, I complained about the distortion it has with low impedance headphones. As you can see, this is now vastly improved, and the Claret Plus 2 Pre has a very good THD plus N. This is how it looks with 32 ohms now. Quick reminder, this is the previous version. Yikes. And here's the new Claret Plus 2 Pre with 300 ohms. Now I mentioned that the headphone volume control is not digitally controlled and just a standard potentiometer. Apparently on my Claret Plus 2 Pre it's snuck by the quality control as it is really crunchy and sticky. I don't hold this against Focusrite, these things can happen and I could have easily arm ate the unit. I didn't do so, so don't be surprised that the channel balance is so bad in the measurement here. When I turn down the headphone volume, one side becomes noticeably louder than the other side. As I said, this shouldn't be a problem with other units and I think the measurement with the original Claret is much more indicative of the performance that you can expect and then it's totally fine. To get a good stereo image, you want to have a minimal amount of audio leaking from one channel into the other. Here the Claret Plus 2 Pre also got an upgrade and it offers a respectable performance of minus 58 decibels. All in all, it's a pretty nice performance of the headphone output with a low distortion and noise, and the ability to drive most headphones to loud listening levels. In terms of performance, the Claret Plus 2 Pre really delivers on its promise, and it does improve on the performance on the previous generation. 
That said, the original Claret 2 Pre was already very good and you'll have a hard time finding much difference in their performance in the real world. Still, Focusrite did listen and up to the audio quality, especially of the headphone output, which is really nice to see. I have to say that the Claret Plus 2 Pre is a very nicely built interface with an excellent audio performance. The only downside I currently see is price. The original Claret 2 Pre USB was sitting around $400 and back then I thought it was a pretty good spot for it to sit in. Till then Audient also released the ID14 Mark II with a similar performance and feature set to the Claret Plus 2 Pre and this makes the $500 price tag a bit hard to swallow. So the Claret Plus 2 Pre delivers a great audio quality with high dynamic range, very low distortion, low noise preamps and all the other things that you expect from an interface like this and you have to decide if the excellent audio quality and the features are worth it for you. Subscribe for more audio interface reviews, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next one.